Hello everybody, it's Mike Levin and today we are going to look at how programs run. Now the reason for this is because there are so many programming language choices out there that one of the best ways to um, understand them and categorize them is to understand the, the, the context in which the code runs on the computer or the processor. So we start out with how does the code get in there in the first place? Well, you've got your monitor and your keyboard and someone sitting at it, typing into it. And uh, a little stick figure guy. Whenever he uh, enters stuff into the keyboard, generally it goes into a text file. This is why the mastery of text files actually is so important uh, as a universal component in uh, programming. So you type, it goes into a text file, the changes in the text file are reflected in the monitor. And from there, there's really three routes that can be taken. So I'm going to draw three boxes for different execution contexts. One here. one a little bit bigger here bigger because we have to show things inside of it and then the third one larger still here and I'm going to draw the compiler for the first path sitting outside the computer and this is the traditional way software is prepared for a computer. This is dating back to the rise of uh, Unix, certainly. So this is path one. Your code goes into a compiler. The compiler makes a tight little unit of executable code. And this is native code. Native code is becoming more and more unusual because of the popularity of this second pathway where you've got a box inside of here and of course this is the virtual machine. Hopefully after all my videos so far you see where this is going. There is also a compiler here but it's a specialized compiler. It's a compiler specifically for that virtual machine. And likewise, this is path, it's path two. And your code ends up here on the virtual machine. Now is that any different from the above? Well, it's very different. Uh, your code, although compiled in a tight, into a tight little unit, there is not really native on the machine, it's isolated. It is called P code or pseudocode. Pseudocode. And then the third path, I'm not going to draw a compiler there at all. I'm just going to draw a nice big box inside of here. Inside of here, what? Well, I neglected to say this outside piece is, of course, the hardware. This box that I just drew here is the interpreter. The interpreter. And the text file on the third possible way your code can run goes directly into the interpreter and it gets executed and has its effect there. Now a uh, little secret is that in order to optimize the interpreters these days the compiler actually is moved inside of there and P code is generated most often along this path as well. It's a 
phase in the evolution of interpreters when they decide to build in a virtual machine to execute the code. And I'm gonna switch pen colors so that I can show you how uh, some language uh, choices that are going on here. The C language, not all those variations on C, uh, like C sharp, uh, but C itself, the ANSI standard C goes in path one. Path two is, of course, C sharp, because it relies on the .NET common language runtime. Java is also here. And those are the famous popular languages that uh, run with these virtual machines for execution. The, this third path has a ton of languages. There's Python here. Perl, all those P languages, PHP, the honorary P language, Ruby, and so what are some of the uh, advantages of these different paths? So I forgot to uh, label stays text. So the advantages. In native code, the primary advantage is execution time is fast. This is where things get optimized. The next big advantage, well, it's not really an advantage, it's a disadvantage. That piece of uh, executable code is not portable. You have to recompile. to get it to go onto different hardware. As opposed to virtual machines, where that compiled P code is portable between different types of hardware. It also is arguably safer. I'll put it in double quotes. All those concepts of code execution isolation, keeping uh, it separate from the native hardware, uh, code running natively is actually kind of dangerous because it has access to the hardware. It can do anything it, it wants. Those were the days of your computer crashing all the time. Today with virtual machines and memory management, you can crash something in the virtual machine and it won't affect the, uh, the host system. And so what's the advantage of things staying text? Well, I keep saying advantage, but really it's slow. But that's why they actually do put a compiler in there. That deals with the slowness thing. And the line of demarcation between uh, these two guys here is very blurred, a very blurred line of demarcation. They're getting more similar all the time, which is one of the reasons Java is losing its luster over a lot of languages in this category because they have the same virtual machine advantage. And uh, the big appeal of this interpreter path is that it has got the easiest workflow. There is no compiling easiest workflow. This whole concept of compiling is very traditional in computer science, and computer science people deal with it all the time, but you don't feel this compile, it's completely hidden from you, and it's ever more often hidden from you here. People using Visual Studio don't feel like they're compiling, even though it is happening. So native code, the old school way, faster, but you have to recompile. The pseudocode, it's highly portable between hardware, it's a lot safer for your code, and uh, using an interpreter. It's slow, but forever getting faster as they optimize the interpreters. But it is the easiest workflow, and that's why I draw this diagram, because I am going to give you what I feel is the best of both worlds. If you're gonna choose a language, why not go for broke in both different directions? You choose the 
best lowish level language for creating native code for when you have to go that route. There's times where you can't get away from C. So my education will have some focus on ANSI standard C. And then why not go for the language that was most made to be friendly and has been around for a long time and is stable and is completely compatible with the C view of the world. All the work that you do on the C side will be applicable here because it is a framework for C. You can pull out parts of Python, put in C. So there you go. That's my reason for with all the language choices in the world we're gonna go with the one that's very unique because it's got the native advantage and the one that is fairly unique because it's got a really easy workflow and it's compatible with the whole Unix slash C view of the world. And that is how programs run and a little bit of the reason for the choices I'm making. Thank you. Bye.